I mean, this question is on MLA. It should, it should be a piece of cake for you guys. Try to do it, please. Anybody wants to hand in crusade, you can also do so now. We've got crusade with this.
We are doing question five, guys. If you came late, okay. Let me let me show you how to do it. Um, so this is Q five. So we have a, a random sample from a from a geometric distribution. So the likelihood function is the product of p times one minus p power x i minus one. Okay. This this is the prob the probability mass function of the geometric. And if you simplify this, you get p power n. 1 minus p power yes you get this and this you can further simplify it yes. to sorry Are you you okay you can further simplify this to 1 minus p power sum of x r I from 1 to n minus minus n. Okay. So that's the first step. The second step is to take the log of the likelihood, so it becomes n log p plus Right, this is the log likelihood. The third step is to take the derivative with respect to p. So this n by p minus right. This is what you get, and you set this to zero and solve for p. So so this becomes n by p equal to <coughs> right. And if you solve this, um, I'm sure all of you got, all of you know how to solve an equation. Now, if you solve this equation for p, you will get p hat equal to n. Yeah, and this will be the same as one divided by x bar. Okay. Now, uh, the last step is to take the second order derivative and show that is negative. This is indeed negative because because of the following because um, because remember each x i each x i by definition is greater than or equal to one right which implies that the sum of x i i from one to n is greater than or equal to n right and this implies that the sum of x i Uh, from 1 to n minus n is non-negative, right? And therefore, this guy here must be must be a negative number because of this, right? Well, that's question five, guys. Right? Can you do a question four, please? Now, question four. Can you go to question four, please? Now, any questions on this? I mean, this should be pretty trivial for you, given the process you've done, right? Um, um.
just only do the MLE part. The okay. profession for just only do part one. Write down the likelihood function and derive the MLE for for the question number four. Okay.
done with question four, guys. <coughs> So question four is on, on, on a binomial. So you have five data points. You have five data points from a binomial distribution with parameters three and p. So so what you need to do is, as usual, first write down the likelihood function, which will be the product i from 1 to 5 of 3 choose xi yeah so this is the likelihood function right I'm sure you've got this bit right so you, then you simplify this. If you simplify this, you get now. The, what's, what's the sum of three minus x i? Tell me. It will be 15 minus the sum of x side, right? You with me? If you sum 3 minus x side, so i from 1 to 5, you get 15 minus this. Right? So the, the next step is to take the log likelihood, so it will be. Step number three is to take the derivative with respect to p. So it will be set this to zero and solve for p. So if you set this to zero and um, it becomes one minus p this for p you will get p hat will become uh, sum of xi from 1 to 5 divided by 15 okay and this you can write as x bar divided by 3 okay x, x bar is the sample mean um, so x pi is simply the sum of x i divided by 5, okay? Now to make sure that this is an MLE, you need to do the second order derivative, which will be minus
and this is certainly less than zero because uh, because each xi from a binomial being from a binomial distribution is less than or equal to three, right? And uh, which implies that the sum of xi from one to five is less than or equal to fifteen. And this implies that uh, 15 minus the sum of xi must be non-negative. All right. Okay, guys, you follow this. Yeah. So can you now? Can you do question three now? If, if you're okay with this. Sign the attorney sheet, guys. Anybody who has a sign. Anybody who has a sign. Who has a sign? 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 Who
don't have who has saturnian ship guys anybody who has no guys have you done question three guys question three is on bias we did bias ages ago guys i did 10 examples on bias you should should know how to do this man um, thank you thank you man so so let's see how we can do it Q3. Um, we want to find the bias of x bar, right? Now, what's the definition? You remember the definition of bias is defined as the expectation minus the parameter you're trying to estimate, right? Which is the expectation of 1 over n times the sum of xi. minus the parameter. Okay? So you don't need the expectation here. Or have you we already taken the expectation inside. So this is one over n times now how do we <coughs> work out the expectation of x i? We are given the density. So you just integrate from delta to infinity of x Yeah, minus minus delta. Now let's pull out E of delta outside, so this becomes delta to infinity of x <coughs> Okay. Now any ideas any ideas on how to how to how to do this? How do you do this integration, guys? Hmm? 
Come on, guys. You you done a course on on, on calculus. You should know better than me, right? How to do this integration? Hmm? Now, how would you do this integration? Do you remember integration by parts? Yeah. Some you must have done that in your nursery, I guess. Yeah. So I'm gonna do integration by parts, you get by parts, right? Yeah, okay, so this becomes <coughs> Okay, if you take the limit, the limit at infinity is zero, the limit at delta is minus minus, so it becomes delta this, and and the integral of this is, is easy, right? The integral of this is simply minus e of minus x. Take the limit from delta to infinity. Okay? Are you with me or what? Yeah? Okay. Right. So you get e of delta divided by n <coughs> sum um, delta e minus delta. The limit at infinity is zero. The limit at delta is uh, minus, so it becomes a plus e of minus delta, right? Minus delta. Okay. The two e of minus delta cancels with this, so it becomes one over n times the sum of delta plus one minus delta. Okay, so this is simply delta plus one minus delta, which is equal to one, which is not equal to zero. So what this implies is that x bar is a biased estimator. of delta. Alright? Is that clear guys or not? <coughs> Alright, how do you do the third part? The second part we have already answered. Okay, the second part is uh, it's trivial because it, th this is part one. Right? So let me put this is part one. Uh, part two, we have, uh, part two is asking you what the limit as n tends to infinity is. So the limit of the bias as n goes to infinity is the limit of 1 as n goes to infinity, which is 1. Right. So part 2 is trivial. Part 3 part three is asking you, can you propose an estimator that is unbiased? Do you have an answer? Minus 1. X bar minus one. Yeah. Any any other suggestions? Any other side? One suggestion is is okay. Let's say y equal to x bar minus one. Do you have other suggestions? Okay. Let let's try this suggestion and see if it works. So the bias of y will be the expected value of x bar minus 1 minus delta, right? And this is the expected value of x bar minus 1 minus delta. 
But we have already shown that the expectation of x bar is is delta plus one minus one minus delta. So this is zero. So hence You okay guys? Can you do question two please now? Question two.
So let's see how we can do question two. So you, you have x bar one, which is a random sample, is the mean of a random sample of size n1. So, so what distribution will it have? I mean, I said this this morning. You guys were in the lectures, right, this morning. So x bar one will have normal distribution with parameter mu and sigma squared by n1, right? x bar 2 will ha also have a normal distribution with parameter mu and sigma squared by n2. Now what you're given here is the estimate of mu hat. You're, you're given mu hat is an estimator given by a x bar 1 plus 1 minus a x bar 2. And you're asked to show, the first part is to show that the bias is zero, which is easy to do because it's the expectation of mu hat minus mu, which is the expectation of A This is A times the expectation of x bar 1 plus 1 minus A times the expectation of x bar 2 minus mu. And we know from this and this that the expectation of x bar 1 is mu and the expectation of x bar 2 is also mu. So this is 0. All right. So hence, right, so we've done the first part, all right, which is pretty, it's not difficult at all, right? The second part is to show that the variance is minimized when A equal to N1 divided by N1 cos N2. So to do that, you need to find the variance. You need to find the variance of the estimator. The variance of new hat, which is the variance of okay. Now, what's the variance of this guys? So your probability one comes in. So this is a squared times the variance of x bar one plus one minus a squared times the variance of x bar two. Right? Now we know from 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 this right that the variance of x bar one is sigma squared divided by n1 and the variance of x bar 2 is sigma squared divided by n2 
So we can write this <coughs> like this. Right? Now we need to show that this function is minimized when a equal to n1 divided by n1 plus n2. I'm sure this goes back to your calculus that you did in semester one. How, how do you minimize a function? Yeah. I mean, you must have done tons of examples like this in your calculus course. I don't know. I'm not here to teach you calculus, guys, but I'm sure you know. So, so let, to minimize this, let g of a, a function g of a, be equal to a squared divided by n1 plus 1 minus a squared divided by n2. Right, to minimize this with respect to a, I'm going to differentiate first. So g prime of a will be 2a n1 minus 2 times 1 minus a n2 and set this to 0. Now, if you solve this equation for a, you will get a equal to n1 divided by n1 plus n2, right? Now, to make sure that this corresponds to a minimum, you need to do the second order derivative, which will be 2 divided by n1 plus 2 divided by n2. And since the second order derivative is positive, right? Since the second order derivative is positive, implies that that g is minimized when a equal to n1 plus n1 plus n2. Right, so hence we have shown that the variance is minimized when a equal to this. Alright guys, I'll see you later. If, you, if, you, if you've done quiz 8, can you give it to me now please? Quiz 8, please. Uh, yes, sir. I want to talk to you. So the deadline of the hour coursework is the 28th of uh, April. 29th of uh, April. So I'm not going to be here. Can I send it by mail? Yeah, yeah, as long as it's a great just me before. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. And uh, do you want, uh, um, what's it called, uh, Malibu Go? Or, uh, that thing I forgot the name. You, you can put the code, yeah. I don't need the command window. I, I just need, need the test code that you have used. You, you know, the R code. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we do it as a script? Uh, take a picture of the screen like with no, no, you don't need to do that sir. you don't need to do that you don't need to put the script I mean you, you can put the script as a code like as a code you can put That's all. yeah yeah do we need to do it on latex or uh, either way latex or word or handwritten or anything is fine can we do like a control print screen of the screen and put it there I don't well, that's one way to do it, but that's too much work for you. You can just put in, copy and paste the code. That is easier for you. You know what I'm saying? Okay. This would be easier for you. It should be uh, five pages, Hello. like so? Yeah, five pages, okay. yes. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, sign, yeah. How are you, man? You're right. <laughs> you haven't signed? Oh, okay. Thank you. You okay? Good.
Thank you. 